Jesus, we remember your kindness, even when we forget. You remind us how you left the 99 to find us. Hi everyone, welcome to Come and Keep the Conversation Going. It's really great today to have Alan Cass, uh, a real father in uh, Essex, to the church. So Alan, welcome to Come and Keep the Conversation Going. Yeah, thanks very much. Thanks for inviting me. Yes, so you remember last time we had, uh, we've been talking to some young people. We just thought it'd be really nice to bring someone not quite so young to come on and just talk about uh, the church scene in Essex and, you know, different things that we can perhaps look at. So, Alan, I just wanted to ask if you give us a little background of yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, so opposite to uh, the youth, I am uh, retired, been retired for a while. Um, I was in education management. I was a primary school head um, and uh, God reinvented me. Um, as I um, ended up uh, working with Pete Carter over in Kent for 10 years. And now I'm here, as you say, as a father. So I work as a spiritual father in the local church where I am in Chelmsford. And, uh, yeah, just enjoying life and going to run into heaven going, yes, I did it. <laughs> so it's really um, great to have Alan with us because he's got a a long-term view of what church is. And so, Alan, I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions like, what are two or three issues that you think the church is having to navigate at this time that you, you feel we need to perhaps talk about sure. and really hear Holy Spirit on how to address those issues? Yeah. So I think the major thing is fatherlessness, uh, orphan-heartedness, whichever way you want to describe it, um, when I was working in um, schools, that's what I discovered, uh, is that men would just disappear and uh, mums would come to me as a head and say, this is nothing to do with my kids, but I just need some help. And I'd sit with them. And I very quickly learned that fatherlessness is endemic in our uh, population, but it's also endemic in the church. And we need to be doing something about it. If we're not doing it, then who will be? And that's my point, really, I think. So with with regards to fatherlessness, what kind of things do you feel as church um, we should be uh, kind of doing to seek to, one, get people to recognise that maybe they are operating out of an orphan-hearted place sure. and then how to become someone that knows they're a son or a daughter? Yeah, so it starts with knowing who you are as an identity, whose son are you, whose daughter are you. Um, that comes from um, knowing more about um, the Father Heart of God. So I think that message needs to continuously move out. I remember Pete Carter saying, we talked about identity for a year um, before people started to get it. Um, so, you know, we've got a culture here that we're trying to battle against and culture will always win if we don't continue to battle it and, and, and try and adapt. So for me, it's about identity uh, and then learning what intimacy looks like with God. How can you really trust him in everything? Um, and that comes from Holy Spirit. So it's just learning that process, really. Um, and, and that will help us all, um, but then building it as family so we become fathers to each other, mothers to each other, and family becomes what God intended it to be in the first place. Yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely concur with that opinion that fatherlessness is is often demonstrated in the church, and therefore if we're, not dem if we're demonstrating fatherlessness... How, how how can the world see something different? And so I know, you know, there's different theological arguments. So when you when you when when I've got friends, if I start talking about the Father Heart of God, they they tend to think that I'm into you know something not quite kosher. What doctrine is that? But actually, Jesus knew exactly who he was, didn't he? He did, and he knew what family looked like. And, you know, when you, you use the word kosher, but actually that word is an important word, isn't it? Because that that's the traditional view of what family is supposed to look like. Um, and I think we've missed it. And I think consumerism is, we talked about it earlier, one of the issues um, in, you know, people take for what they for what they want. They, they don't join in. Um, so they come on a Sunday and you get consumerism that way. Uh, I always remember when I was in school, 
a kid coming, uh, a new child coming, and I used to take them down for lunch to the lunch room, and I took this little boy down, and uh, we walked in, and there's a, a the food's lined up, and there's some little bread rolls to start with, and I saw this kid out of the corner of my eye, took a bread roll, put it in his pocket, and he looked around, and I could see it again out of the corner of my eye, took another one, put it in his pocket. Anyway, we had lunch. And it was only afterwards I realised, oh, that's what orphan-heartedness looks like. You take what you can and you squirrel it away, um, you know, just in case, because there's never enough and you might not get enough, you know, and I think that, that's become endemic in what we're, what's going on. I, I remember a few years ago, because um, I have grandchildren that, you know, are our grandchildren, but they they were adopted into the family rather than, you know, a natural born or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I remember my granddaughter, my eldest granddaughter, who I cherish so much. She she was round our house for a meal, and I took six or seven roast potatoes. <laughs> yes. And uh, she, we were sitting at the table, and. You know, obviously, mum and dad said, to her, you know, oh, you can't have any more. And she turned around and said, but Pops has taken seven. <laughs> yes. and, 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 it, and then I just said to her, you know, you can have as many as you like. You don't need to pile your plate. You can eat three. Once you've had those, you can have another three. You are, this is your family, yeah. your entitlement. Yeah. This is yours. You know, yeah. you can take the white table home from the fridge. That's but it. because she had grown up, for a part of her life with with not much yeah. coming into a family where she could be a, a daughter she still was operating from yeah. that orphan state and i yeah. i've watched my uh, some of my grandchildren i've learned so much about you know orphan yeah. an orphan state and so yeah. it really breaks my heart in the church when i see people that have been Christians for quite a long time, still not understanding that mm. you are loved by a father in heaven. Yeah, who, yeah. Who, who calls you son or daughter. Yeah, and you're loved unconditionally. I think that's the problem. Most people put conditions on it. My mum, when I was a youngster, used to say, God will find you out. He'll find you out. You mark my words. Your sin will catch you. And I, that was that was my life as a kid. And it's only these last 15 years I've really realised that freedom looks like being his son, no matter what. I remember the first time I heard Danny Silk talk about unpunishable. Well, that, that, oh, that yeah, developed a some, few boats. That, that, <laughs> that certainly revealed some orphan-hearted behaviour, yeah. in my opinion. But, um, you know, the thing, some of the messages that, that I think is is in scripture. I think there is a doctrine for this stuff. Yeah. Um, we, we, it, it, there's, there's, there's still the kind of religious police who, you know, are telling you that we're misrepresenting the father. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yet Jesus met the woman in adultery. Yeah. He said, who condemns you? Yeah. No one. And then he said, neither do I. And he was the one person that could have condemned her. And his condemnation of her would have been with authority. Absolutely, yeah. And yet he said, neither do I. I that, now, I know some people say, well, that little bit in the Bible was, this is, might have been added kind of stuff. But I, I, I think that just shows the Father heart of God through the Son so well. And just remember, Paul said, you know, what should we do? Go on sinning then? He says this in Romans. By no means. You know, we've, we find the route where we, when we do sin, we go back to God and go, oh, I'm really sorry I messed that up. And God says, come on, let's get on. What, what, should, what should we do today? You know, it's that that moving it on thing, not sticking with your, yeah. getting caught up in but, your sin. But, you know, I, I, what I find such a liberating message, <laughs> I, I have brothers and sisters in Christ who feel that that message is, you know, a bit heretical. And yeah. You, so... And that, if you're not careful, that can also take you, lead you down an orphan path where you, you're worried constantly: Are you saved or not? Where, you know, I, you know, Jesus said controversial stuff. It stirred up the religious. Yeah. Um, and you know, sometimes the message of Jesus, even today, doesn't it? it stirs up the religious in us. I mean, I've sat in meetings where I'm thinking, I'm not sure, I, I like that. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I know well, that I'm not person, sure I agree yeah. with it. Exactly. You know, as, uh, agreement isn't an issue. It, it's become an issue, which is why we get division. Yeah. But actually, it's okay to disagree. It's well, okay to disagree. Uh, you, you disagree. <laughs> no, no. I was going to say, I'm married to Lizzie. We're in the yes. covenant relationship. <laughs> and uh, yes, I <laughs> disagreement isn't easy, particularly no. when you, you love each other. But I don't say you're not my wife because you don't see it how I see it. You're still part of God's yeah, family. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, this this accusational language that I, I sometimes feel in the church is yeah, quite strong. Especially in the it church. Cre- it does yeah. create an orphan kind of yeah. behaviour, yeah. isn't it? Paul Manwaring said something like, um, it's okay to disagree, just don't be disagreeable. Exactly, yeah. You know. I have to say sometimes with busy, I probably am disagreeable yeah, yeah. as well. So. Yeah, well, I'm sure we all do <laughs> yeah. that. But, but, it's... but, yeah, I think that whole who are you, God knows who you are, you, you are fearfully and wonderfully mm. made. Yeah. I have plans for you to prosper yeah, you and exactly. to do you good, to give you hope in the future. Uh, but yeah. that you only really explore all of that stuff when, when you understand that, that you are a son. Yeah. And I Jesus died for yeah. all the things that that we we fall short in. Absolutely. And you know, I have people level at me, you're a bit weak on sin. No, actually I think no. in that relationship with the Father. It's very clear when, you know, you need to put stuff right. And I guess yeah. I think in the last 10 years I've probably said, asked for forgiveness more, more yeah, for than sure. I did in the previous 20, yeah. 20 or 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Because I, I feel when I act badly or act out of character of being a follower of Jesus, I need to put that right. Yeah. Because I don't want to disappoint my Heavenly Father. No. And it's a 24-7 thing, isn't it? Yeah. Holy Spirit's with us 24-7. He doesn't sleep. We do, hopefully. But actually, when you wake up in the morning, you say, good morning, Holy Spirit, what are we doing today? You know, let's make it some exactly. an adventure, not some, you know, oh, yeah. and I do it every now and again. Even now, I catch myself waking up going, you know, well, I, I having find, a pity party. Sorry to be into it. No, no, I, I find myself sometimes... <laughs> Thinking like an orphan. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. And that really... <laughs> well, now you recognise it, yeah. don't you? See, yeah. that's the big difference. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, sab- self-sabotage. Mm. What, why do what the devil wants you to do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not... Fall into his it's trap. Not, I haven't... I, I, I'm, I'm a son who sins. I'm not I'm not yeah. a sinner. No. I am. I have been saved mm. by, by the supernatural works of Jesus. Mm. Absolutely. And I am saved, even though I might... Have broken the speed limit and said a yeah, few yeah, things yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> probably weren't helpful. Um, yeah. But that doesn't give us the excuse to keep on sinning. No, not at that, all. That no. cheap, we need to be gr- clear about you know, that. We, we, I've had it said of, of us, we, we sometimes cheat grace. No, no, grace is grace. Mm. It, 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 we, yeah. we, we're not saying that we can do whatever we like. No. No, that's, and, I, and I know that from you. I've yeah, yeah, seen yeah, you com- yeah. confront people. Absolutely. So, so freedom isn't license. Freedom no. is freedom to be, yeah. not not just freedom from. So we're freed. We're freed from sin, from the the jaws of sin. But that means you know we can move on and and do things for God that are that are adventures. You know, and I'm loving it. It's great fun. Yeah. Well, I, I always find you know, when I'm with you, Al, I always find it a real sort of joy, and there's. There's fun in this. I mean, yeah, the journey could, yeah, of yeah. walking with Jesus is is a fun. It's not all. I have to be really serious. No. You know, I, I should imagine when Jesus was with his disciples, there was a lot of humor. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, the the, the yeah. that the, and and God uh, gave us humor. He, yeah. it, it wasn't that we sit ticking a a, a load of rules. No, Am I absolutely. in today? I'm out. It's it's. We yeah, are yeah. sons, no yeah. longer. Yeah, um, what know, have I done to deserve it? You know, you think, oh, yeah, done, we did nothing. It, it, the price was ultimately paid by him. Yeah. Um, nothing to do with us, actually. Yeah, so, yeah, that, I mean, that whole, it's, we could spend <laughs> yeah, hours we, talking about yes. orphan-heartedness and fatherlessness, but I I think that it's something that in comma keep the conversation going, but we just want to keep coming back to yeah. because I can easily revert back to living in bondage 
rather than living in freedom. And you know, Galatians 5 verse 1 says, it was for freedom that Christ has set us free. And I know Danny talks about, Danny Silk, sorry, talks about freedom with responsibility. Exactly. So I'm not, exactly. my freedom d- doesn't mean I can, af- I can deliberately offend someone or deliberately be rude. Yeah. You know, the, the, the fruit of the Spirit needs to be demonstrated in us, yes. in everything we do. And Sometimes I've, I've, I get frustrated with myself when I look back and think that was an unkind way of acting. Yeah. And, you know, it, I say this, and, and this is really to make us brave, is to think that it's only when I'm, in, I'm walking in the fruit of the Spirit yeah. that I'm actually demonstrating my love for Jesus. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, that's... Yeah. And I, I see him in I see in church like like you you see people they're 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 angry they're uptight they're, mm, yeah the way they yeah. speak to one another yeah. and yet I, I sometimes think since the last ten fifteen years that journey of knowing I'm a son and therefore I want to act out of my sonship rather yeah. than out of my yeah. orphan state is yeah. is really key so yeah great message uh, yeah. any 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 other th- any other thing that you can think of. Um, no, I'm happy to just carry on the conversation, which is, of course, what this is all about. Yeah. Isn't it? Just to, you know, I'm not expressing any idea that I'm right. It's just my own experience of, of where I've got to. Um, but I've found freedom, and I'm not letting go of it. Um, yeah. And I, I want people to come with me. So, you know, that's part of what I do. Fathering, is to show people what freedom looks like and what it can be for them. Yeah, because because you know, I know um, in your early Christian. In, in your early Christian journey, wasn't it? It was it was more rule based, very much rather than based. relationship yeah. with a loving father. Yeah, very much rule based. And and again, you know, talking about culture, we've got to shift the culture, and it doesn't happen overnight. No, you know, no. COVID didn't help, did it? You know, we all went back to, you know, navel gazing and wondering what what was next. And you know, it it's it's been interesting to come out of that and move on. We've not mentioned COVID before on Come on, Keep the Conversation oh, Going. But that's great, you know. <laughs> I mean, if you mention COVID and church, it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yes. you know, I, I, again, the rules that came on us, the control, you know, and I don't want to get into that, but me and you have had long conversations, haven't we, outside of, yeah. of this where control is another thing that the yeah. enemy wants to Absolutely, us, and, made, and made, you know, hay, heyday with it, didn't he? Yeah, so, yeah. Anyway. yeah. So, guys, we're just going to have a little uh, break now. We're going to come back to keep the conversation going. If you if you like what you're hearing, if you're enjoying what 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 this kind of we're trying to do, please press the subscribe button and the like button. It really helps. And now I'm just going to uh, let uh, just you know, Gracie Taylor was on a couple a couple of weeks ago, and she's now just going to sing another song for us, uh, which I hope you will enjoy. Slow and sweet, we sway, take the lead, and I will follow. Finally, ready now to close my eyes and just believe that you won't leave me where you don't go. When my faith gets tired and my hope sees. Lost. You spin me around and around and remind me of that song, the one you wrote for me, and we dance. Oh, when we I've been told to pick up my sword and fight for love Little did I know that love had won for me Here in your arms, you still my heart again I'll breathe you in like I've never breathed till now My faith gets tired and my hope seems lost 
You spin me round and around and remind me of that song, the one you wrote for me. And we dance. Oh, when we dance. Oh. So uh, welcome back. I hope you, hope you enjoyed that. We're really um, privileged to have someone like Gracie Taylor connecting with Come and Keep the Conversation going. And say so thank you, Gracie. Um, and, and uh, you know, we, one, of the things that, one of the things that we want to do on Come and Keep the Conversation going is, is introduce different aspects of church life that we can talk about. And Alan, you know, we talked a little bit uh, before the break on um, freedom or being being sons and daughters and not orphans. Um, the the other thing I just thought I'd throw a little another hand grenade perhaps is you 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 know we've been on this journey of culture of honour keep your love on um, sure uh, and I remember when um, I first heard that message uh, from Danny uh, I, 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 Danny Silk um, I remember thinking. Uh, yeah, we're going to go for this in the church that I'm part of. And after like two or three months, I actually realised how dishonouring yeah. our environment was. Yeah. And I, I, I nearly pulled back from it. Um, yeah. But honour is, uh, is, is, is part of our journey, isn't it? As, as, yeah. As, yeah. as sons and daughters to honour one another. Yeah. Yeah, I think Danny Silk, as, as everybody knows, is an American. So he brings an American culture. So when he talks about this culture of honour, <clears throat> excuse me, he's talking about um, a, a system in America where people do listen to each other and do honour each other in ways that we don't. So we culturally are suspicious of one another, we're cynical, um, and so the culture of honour has to be anglicised and I, Again, just flagging up Pete Carter and made a great job of anglicising what that meant so that we end up with this idea that we're connected and connection is the key to the culture of honour. So you're, co- you're, you're honouring somebody else through connection, not just, you know, sound bites and, and words, um, but stuff that actually means something. And this drawing the gold out of people, that's an expression, again, that we've we've learned over the years, but it's easy to dig dirt on people. And that's, you know, if you look at most English comedians, that's what they do. Uh, and we all laugh at it. And it's all very funny because it's all very um, British. But actually what isn't British is drawing the gold out of people, finding the good and celebrating it. Um, and it, it's something that we've learned to do in church and it's beginning to have a real effect, as you know. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we've got someone in, in New Life, um, a lady called Denise, and and Denise, you know, always, it used to frustrate me in the initial, when I first met her, that this calling out the gold in people, c- calling out the God stuff. Yeah. Whereas yeah. I would want to focus on, you know, the... Yeah, what do we need to fix? The dross. Let's, yeah. let's sort your dross out. Yes. But actually what Denise taught me in that is, you know, speak who God says someone is. Mm. And that's not always easy. No, um, no. But it's so important, isn't it, to say to someone, actually, I I see this on you. Yeah. So Jesus, you know, his model with the 12 disciples was, if I'm honest, if I'd have been Jesus, I would have got rid of the 12. <laughs> All and, of them? Yeah. And got a few others in. <laughs> yes. Um, but Jesus, you know, that journey with that Jesus took the disciples on, wasn't it? You know, he, yeah. Okay, another one of my friends would say, you know, Dwayne, that he would say, well, you know, Rob, always remember Jesus had a Judas in his <laughs> team, which I yeah. think he says to comfort. But really, if we would have got rid of Judas, probably yeah. pretty quickly, and we yeah, certainly yeah. wouldn't have let him look after the money. Yeah, 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 yeah. But did so? A question, I just you know to. 
did Jesus give Judas an opportunity to live up to his God calling? Yeah. No, I think he did. And, you know, um, you do need a Judas in the sense that that's what brings the right and the wrong. Um, you've got to have something to adjust against. And and he did give Judas the opportunity in the Last Supper. If you read it through carefully, um, you'll see that. And, it you know, it, it's an obvious um, it's an obvious one. But without that, there wouldn't have been a crucifixion. There wouldn't have been the death and resurrection. So Judas actually did a job. He did. You know, which is challenging in it itself, is. isn't it? But well, I, we I was, I was at a, I did, I did a believers in recovery um, mm, yes. training, and uh, in the text, Judas's name come up, and of course, someone asked me a question. Um, yeah. So is Judas in heaven or is he in hell? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I gave Good my question. answer. No, yes. I gave my answer. And, you know, that was interesting watching the response in the room. Um, because, again, we don't know where Judas is. No, no. It, it, We'd a, like to form an opinion. Yeah, well, religion tells us he, yeah. he, 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 didn't, get, he didn't get into heaven. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but there was a, you know, with with taking his own life, there mm. was a recognition of what he had done. Mm, sure. um, so, you know, they, they, and we, if we're really honest, we will never know no. until we get there. No. But I've noticed in life, no one calls their child their sons Judas. No, they don't. <laughs> No, they don't. It's, it's true. Yeah. Hello, what should we call this child? Oh, we call, call him Judas. Judas. Yeah, yeah. But, he'll let us down eventually. But yeah. there's others in scripture, isn't there, who let Jesus down seriously? Yeah. Uh, that you know, I, I always kind of smile when you know David, and I look at all the things David did, and here he is. This is a man after God's own heart. Yeah, which I think always gives me hope. You know, so, you know, if he can work with people like David, he can work with people like me. Absolutely. And uh, that's what I love about him, about Jesus, about, you know, his forgiveness and his unconditional love. Yeah. Very, very much uh, a really important part of the story, isn't it, of I, I am not the just judge. Yeah. And yet I find myself judging people yeah. as if my judgment is correct. Yeah. Well actually it's it's the it's the just judge's judgment of us that we need to Absolutely we, we need to sort out, isn't it? And yeah. you know, we're not saying that everybody gets to heaven. No. No, so otherwise you're back to universalism, yeah. which is dangerous. Yeah. And can be leveled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you know, without like without contrition, without repentance. Yeah. Um, but it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance, you know, just to quote scripture that I'm very fond of. Yeah. But it, it's true. It's absolutely true. It's, he's so kind. He's so, so good. Um, even though we don't deserve it, he's still so good. And he gives us a choice. If he didn't give us a choice, we wouldn't be free. We'd just be a pawn in his big game, which a lot of people still think is true. You know, oh, it's God's will. This is God's will. Well, maybe it is, but actually we're given a choice. And God says to me, "What What do you want to do?" You know. Yeah, I, 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 I've got another <laughs> occasion where someone was saying, "You know, I I can't help, I help, I can't help sinning. I love Jesus, but I can't help sinning." And uh, another explosive moment when I said, "Well, you know, everything that we do is down to choice." Absolutely. So I I choose. I try to choose yeah. not to sin. Yeah. And saying you don't have a choice is simply taking away the power. Yeah. Yeah, you just you just lost your power. Yeah. So the the power of the power of making good choices, teaching people to make good choices. Yeah. Is you know, but I, sometimes I, I I get the feeling that Jesus celebrates when I don't do what I habitually done when yeah. something goes wrong. Yeah. It's again, going back to Romans, that's yeah. what Paul talks about a yeah. lot, doesn't it? It, it is. I do what I don't want to do. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's a that's an interesting passage, isn't it? It is. is. We, even Paul recognised that he, yeah. he, he failure. He, he in scripture he, he didn't just paint a picture of that he was this perfect person. No, no. Um, but he, do, he talks about the grace of God, and yeah. I think the grace is is so so important. Yeah. The grace of God upon my life is not dependent on me or what I've done, but on Him. Yeah, not on me. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it's, it's it's just these are these are deep things. They are. And if we yeah. don't, if we live 
in a I'm being going to be punished every time I do something wrong. Yeah. Uh, actually, no, our punishment for that yeah. wrongness was placed on Jesus. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. unmerited favour is that I yeah. get to live in what he won for us on the cross. Exactly, yeah. And yeah. yeah. Good news. It I, is good news. You know, I just want to say to you guys watching, Jesus is good news. <laughs> Yeah, and amazing if, news. Yeah, and if you don't know him, then yeah. give us a give, give us, us a, a, a text yeah. or whatever you do yeah. on this YouTube thing, yeah. and we'll come back to you because yeah. um, we want to see you get freedom too. Freedom is the key to it all. Yeah, um, it was for freedom. You. Yeah, that Christ has set us free. Oh, absolutely, and and, and yeah. you know that freedom is freedom. Yeah, and we we just want to celebrate the freedom that Jesus has won for us. Yeah. Um, so yeah. just just to, as we as we gradually head towards a close, um, so what one or two things would you like to say to the people that watch Comma Keep the Conversation Going just to encourage them to, to dig deeper into Jesus? Yeah, I think, you know, it's a, it's a good title for a series, isn't it? Keep the Conversation Going. And I think that's the important thing is to have a conversation spiritually with Jesus and see what he'll come up with. And he, you know, I was listening to somebody talking about dreams the other day. You know, dreaming is actually one of God's ways of connecting to you. So just allow yourself to dream. And, you know, if you've got a problem, go to bed on that problem and wake up with a solution. Don't listen to the news at the end of the day. Listen to something that lifts you, whatever that might be. Um, and I learned that a long time ago, and that, that makes a big difference. Yeah, so so Alan's encouraging you to, before you go to sleep, give God some things that you want him to answer. He may speak to you through a dream. You may be asking questions of God. You know, he is listening. You don't need to connect with a per, another person to hear God he wants to speak to you like direct. To you, he is a father. When my earthly dad didn't speak to all the neighbours about me. He came and spoke to me and said, Rob, that is not acceptable. That is great. And our heavenly father is a better representation of goodness than our earthly fathers. And so we, we just want to say to you, you know, God loves you. He cherishes you. He desires that you live to your full potential of what Jesus won on the cross for you. And so, guys, we just want to say thank you for joining us. Uh, remember, you are the head and not the tail. And God wants to do something good for you today. Amen. How you left the 99 to find us, to find us.